Hey everybody and welcome to another video and in this one I'm going to talk about depth and what I want to explain to you is the concept of using depth to draw your eye, the person who's viewing the picture, to draw their eye to the correct part of the image, i.e. what you want them to look at. This allows you to create more artistic looking shots, shots with more going on in them and it allows you to be a little bit more creative and make your shots look a bit better. As well as obviously having the aesthetic appeal of making your shots look more photorealistic. So we'll start looking at this image and as you can see we're using various different concepts here. We're using depth of field, we're using the rule of thirds and we're using leading lines. So initially we've got depth of field which means we've got a background and a foreground which are both blurred using an effect called bokeh bokeh it's a French word some people pronounce it boca or bokeh but they're idiots and what we're doing is we're separating the subject from the background and the foreground by making sure that she's in sharp focus while the rest of the scene is bokeh now this effect on its own can be quite effective in some cases but what we've done here is we've also added a second element the rule of thirds i.e the character or what we want to look at is approximately either a third or two thirds of the way across the image this is more of an aesthetic thing it doesn't necessarily lead the character's eye there but it makes the picture feel more right it's a, a photography principle that we use and it's always good to try and employ it in renders whenever you can and lastly, the third concept that we're using is leading lines, i.e. the main two lines along the edges of the pier both lead your eye towards the character, making the viewer know exactly where they're supposed to be looking. In contrast, if we look at this picture of the shopping mall, there are plenty of lines and there's plenty of things going on, but there's no indication as to what the viewer is supposed to be looking at. There's no attention grabbing detail or technique used here to say this is what I want the viewer to look at. Now in this case that's good because it's not a picture of any particular thing, it's a picture of the mall so the whole picture is important. But if you were trying to make any one thing stand out in this photograph you'd have to employ a lot of different techniques to make it better. In fact, you probably have to recompose the entire shot because there's just too much going on here. Now we can use many different ways of doing this particular technique, but obviously the first and foremost thing that we want to be doing is making sure that we're separating the character from the background. Now we can do that with lighting on indoor scenes, but when we're out and about using an outdoor render like this one it's more difficult because you have you're using sunlight you're using natural light which means you can't go adding wacky photo lights into the scene I mean you could but it would look more like a fashion shot than kind of a natural render which is what this picture is intended to be the thing that you'll notice with all of the images that are popping up on the screen at the moment is that we're using a combination of depth of field and light manipulation, whether that is studio lighting or just bouncing the natural light that's available off of different cards in order to make the subject pop from the background so that they're clearly separated and the eye is drawn to exactly what we want the viewer to be seeing. So here's an example of depth at work and I'll show you how we achieve that. So we've got this scene, there's a small pier and our character is standing about midway along the pier and we've got our camera shooting this scene located over here on the left of the screen, just over here there behind some flowers and we're using the flowers and we're using the posts along the, the support posts along the pier as our foreground depth indicators and then obviously there are posts going along behind the character and then obviously the background with the horizon and the water meets the land and then the sky so we've got quite a solid indicator of depth here and so when we go into the, ca the camera in question, you can see that we're using the rule of thirds as well. 
So our character is roughly two thirds of the way along the picture. And we've got these flowers in front of the camera, as you can see here, they're gonna create a nice little bouquet effect of color in front of the character. And then we've got the posts leading up to the character and then trailing off behind her. And this effect, if we go into NVIDIA IRA mode, as you can see, even before the render's really finished, you can see that the shot is leading your eye to the character, so you know exactly what you're supposed to be looking at. And this is more than just blurring the background and blurring the foreground so that the eye leads, goes to the right place. It's about the position of the character within the shot. It's about using leading lines. The lines of the pier are obviously leading your eye toward the character. And then you've got an indicator of depth so you know where your eye is supposed to be looking. You can see the character. And that's really what the principle of using depth and composition in a shot is about. It's about creating an image that looks nice and your eye knows where to go. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you found this useful. I look forward to seeing some of the results. By all means, get in touch and show me your work and I'll be more than happy to have a look at it. As always, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. That always helps me out. Hit the notification icon if you want to see more of my content. And I will very much look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.